Good morning everyone and welcome to another podcast. First one for a while obviously because of the lockdown, it's wonderful to be back out. I was just thinking back and I think it was back end of last year, just before the uh, new restrictions on the grayling, but I'm out on the trout which is lovely. Um, We've had a couple of days of warm weather and then it's gone really chilly today, there's an easterly blowing. So I've come off the main river and uh, come to one of my favourite little woodland streams. A couple of reasons why really. One, there's definitely no grayling in here. Um, so I really want to leave the grayling alone at the minute. A couple of the places I, I do fish have quite a lot of grayling, so it's close season. I want to let them, let them get on with the spawning. And uh, the other reason really is that I'm hoping just this, we're in the woods here in a very, like a gorge really, with woods growing up the side. So I'm hoping that it's just a bit more sheltered. Um, but the water's still very cold and uh, we are right at the beginning of the trout season so it's going to be tough today, this stream is tough anyway um, the setup I've got, a little 7 foot 6 weight sorry, a 7.5 foot 4 weight um, I've got 9 foot of tapered leader 6x and then very simple today, I've just got a single Storia's pheasant tail nymph it's very cold, there's nothing hatching at all, the fish are going to be down a bit but the stream isn't too deep here, it's reasonably shallow so just a, tr- a traditional Sawyer's will be enough probably just to get down to the bottom zone. Just making my way up the river now as you can hear, a bit slippy underfoot. Um, we're coming to this first run there trees are in bud actually which I was quite surprised about, I would have thought it would have been just another week or two before the they're definitely in bud and um, there's a few leaves on some of them as well which is which is lovely I'm just going to get the old wading stick out because it's uh, very slippy underfoot on these rocks so I'll just get myself into position this stream what is it 15 foot across it is widest and probably only well you can hop across it if it's narrowest probably only six foot um, I say hop across six foot probably is a bit bit of a long hop but six foot a running jump you can get across it um, I can say it cuts through a big gorge and then there's woods up either side I'm just coming to the first run here a steady pace there's a bit of a, a current flow down the left hand bank it's what you, it's loosely a pool more of a glide and then at the top of the pool there's a nice snaking riffle um, coming into the pool so I think I'll set up here and just prospect up with this single soyuz pheasant tail and if we're lucky we might get some kind of sniff but I say it's cold and it's a difficult stream at the best of times and I've treated myself, I've been in the shop this morning, I've treated myself to a new line um, my uh, old line was getting a little tired so I've got the joy of that nice super slippy new line I'm just going to put a bit of um, a bit of degreaser on this leader just want to make sure it's cutting through the surface film lots of people out today obviously the, the lockdown's literally just finished and you can now kind of come out and meet up in slightly larger groups and travel so we're very busy but we're just away from the uh, hustle and bustle here right let's get some degreaser on this leader especially on that thick bit at the top Okay. Right. Put a few casts up and see what happens. As per when I'm nymph fishing, I've got my little um, Hive's indicator. Sorry, Hive's uh, braided loop on the end, and that acts as my indicator. But. I can, I'm only casting probably 15, 15 feet at the most really, so 
with this new fly line I can easily see it in this light even without the, the braided loop oh it's lovely to have a new line on it's always a treat to have a new line on that's casting lovely I like this simple kind of fishing it's the, no droppers, no teams tap it up, no long casting really little streams little wild brown trout, the fish are small in here you know, a pound would be a, a tremendous fish out of here uh, normally kind of a, you know, a few ounces oh, there's a little uh, look like a little dimple of a rise there just well not a rise, a, a bulge there's something taking just under the surface in front of me just try and run it over that well, whatever happens, I'm sure like many of you who've ventured out for, the, uh, for your first time fishing for a while today I know I often you often hear anglers saying our oh, catching doesn't matter uh, and secretly most of the time it does if we're really honest with ourselves catching it does matter a little bit doesn't it but I can say from the bottom of my heart today catching does not matter it is lovely to be back out hearing the bird singing and feeling the river tumbling over my wading boots it's going to keep pushing up here pretty even current in this bit so I'm prospecting from left to right I've got very mature trees on both banks really tall trees and there's various bits of ivy and the odd willow that's just dangling over so just having to be a little bit careful with my cat as I explore the edges uh, in this particular stream here you only really get one shot at a fish and, or one shot at a pool so if you do end up putting your fly into an overhanging branch you have to wade in and, and go and get it that pretty much kills the pool and it's time to just wade on up there they're really spooky in here so I'm also being as careful as I possibly can with my wading Yeah, it really is a chilly breeze today and we all know the, the saying the wind from the east, the fish bite the least and the wind from the west, the fish bite the best uh, there's lots of sayings in fly fishing but that is one I do hold fairly true even with salmon fishing when the fish aren't actually feeding as they come up the river a cold easterly blowing across is never good news uh, if you ever come for a day's tuition or guiding with me as well as teaching you all the technique I'll also give you a, a load of good excuses for when you go back home or you meet your friends in the pub and they ask you, ask you if you've caught anything I'll give you a bookful too cold, too warm too bright, barometric pressure's wrong, you name it, lack of hatches, taking short, feeding on smuts, I've got them all. Right, progressing up the pool, starting to narrow a bit, and the water's picking up pace on the left bank, we've now got a bit of current coming through and the right bank is fairly slow and it's almost back eddying round a bit really and lots of mossy rocks all tumbled down the banks that form the edges of the river covered in a lovely green mature moss and the, the trees look fairly green here but it's actually just ivy it's not leaves but it, creates the illusion of a bit of greenery taking my time, nothing I would 
considered to be a take just yet. As ever, what I'm doing is prospecting with that nymph, casting it up through and then watching the end of the line as I just retrieve and pick the slack up. And looking for the subtlest little stops or movement in the end of the line. And if I see it just suddenly stop or move away, I will be striking. Lots of gnarled tree roots just here on the left and overhanging branches. It looks fairly deep and that looks like a classic line for a, a fish, but it's hard to cover that. I'll try my best to cover it. Oh, oh I've lost it. Jumped out of the water and lost it just where I said next to those gnarled tree roots. And uh, it took very quickly actually, and then uh, did a couple of somersaults and threw the hook. Oh, that's fantastic. A super start to the day. I'll try plopping it in there again, but I'm not going to hold my breath. It looks deep here. And I'm edging forward with my left foot, expecting it to disappear. Oh, I can feel that bite on the end of my fingers, just where the lines wet it. And as the water's uh, running around some of the rocks here. Swirling and there's a bit of a washing machine effect going on. It's never the easiest water to fish when it's like that. So I'm just raising the rod tip a touch just to pick some line off. High sticking, as the Americans sometimes call it, just to help control my drift a little bit. Just keeping one eye ahead of me as well for just in case anything rises, but I'm not expecting much today. I'm heading up towards the riffle now, the channel where the water is actually filling the pool. So probably got another 20 feet to go before this one's fished out. Curving up water, just messing with my line a bit, snaking everywhere and pulling bits of it under. So I think I'm going to go for more of a upstream spider technique just for this last bit. Just tap it on and use the rod to lift off the line. So fishing with barely any line out and grab my wading stick as well. Try and explore the real seams of this tongue of current that's coming in here. Just on the edges, that's where one might just be lying, just off the quick water, and then they can just nip into that fast water and intercept bits of food if they see fit. Right, this is fished out now. So, carefully work my way up this riffle here, and then there's a few boulders to scramble over and then I've got another nice run ahead of me. Well I hope some of you have uh, managed to get out and cast a line and I hope you've stayed as well as you can during this lockdown. I know it's been tough on a lot of people. Um, so my best wishes to you all. There's a scramble of all the days you don't want to fall in today. It's it's cold. Uh, if I just hang back from the pool, I can just fish a little bit here. Always difficult to control the line, but 
was up in a fish just sat in a lip at the very back of the pool. Ah, I've done what I didn't want to do there. Just dropped it into a root and I have to wade up and get it. But we're only at the very back end of the pool, so hopefully if I'm steady, I won't scatter anything too badly. Oh, it is deep, deep and cold. Bit of a stop there, and I uh, lifted up and did feel some resistance, but just wondering if that was bottom. I normally tell if it's a fish because you just feel that little bit of a kick. It's kind of resistance, but it obviously just feels alive a bit, or is that was felt a bit dead. So every year I always set myself a bit of a a theme for the year really, a fly fishing theme. And uh, some years in the past it's been to do a lot more saltwater fly fishing, salmon sea trout, pike on the fly. Uh, anyone that knows me knows me. I, I I enjoy the variety of fly fishing and if you're a regular listener to the podcast you'll know that I'm a very keen nymph angler. So this year oh that was a little stop there. This year the mission is to do more dry fly fishing. I've done a lot of it obviously over the years, but I'm going to just try and put that effort in maybe to put on a dry. And we'll see how that fares. Well, it's chilly, but it's really pleasant out here. It is a beautiful little stream this. It's just the right size for intimate fly fishing. It's not so small that you're having to kind of commando in between the bushes. Uh, seven and a half foot rod, you can get a nice overhead cast out most of the time, but it's it's still definitely a small stream rock. I'm snagged on that, so I'm gonna have to wade up and grab that. Oh well, I'd about finish the pool anyway. Well, I've just hit a rock in the riffle, so I'll slowly wade up and get that. I'm going to have to get my hand in here to get this out, I think. So the older I get, I start to feel the cold these days so much more than I used to. I went in the fridge the other day to get a, a carrot out and uh, it had been in the bottom of the fridge and I held the carrot and I started to feel the cold on it. I noticed it creeping up on me. Right, so really short pool this next one. It, well basically it's just, well, I'd say it's just a long riffle really but it looks right for fish, but I'm um, not sure the right time of year for this bit, but have a look. Go to stay well back and run a few nymphs down both sides because there's a it's switched over here, the big tongue of currents coming on the right hand side and the back head is on the left. But it looks reasonably fishy. Watch behind me, there's a few branches there. So I guess I might have a little chat about the, the nymph that I'm using. Very famous nymph, invented by Frank Sawyer, who is certainly one of my fishing heroes. And like all his uh, nymphs, really incredibly simple. A few strands of pheasant tail and a bit of copper wire. But it's a good imitation of many of the nymphs that the fish will be feeding on, especially some of the upwings. So anything like uh, the large dark olive, 
and such like, which is a, going to be a, one of the first flies to hatch on here. And um, it does a perfectly good imitation of that nymph, as well as plenty of the other um, upwing nymphs. So it's a great all round fly. Uh, just searching the river at times like this. It's also really one of the simplest flies to tie, as long as your pheasant tail fibers are long enough. So it's great if you're just starting off with tying. But other nymphs I could use on here. Uh, little gold ribbed hairs here, similar thing, probably in the 16. Um, a little olive nymph, the olive, maybe an olive copper head if I wanted to get it down a bit more. Anything like that really. They're all going to do a similar job. And then the other option would be to fish with little spiders. Um, little black spider, maybe snipe and purple, that kind of thing. And just search the water with them. But when I'm fishing spiders, I like to see a few fish bulging. For me, I just want to get it. Have a few fish moving up towards the surface and feeding. Because the spider is not going to sink particularly deep. And just with the, this colder weather today, and the lack of food, I'm thinking the fish are going to be down. Which is why I've opted for the nymph. Right, where's the stick? I half wonder actually if this, in a couple of these pools, if this Sawyer's is not getting down enough. I'd probably be better off with a, something with a little bead on. But, I'm not too fussed today, I'm happy just to prospect up with this and take the rough with the smooth. I think about this little woodland river, it's, it looks really shallow and it's not as shallow as you think in places. It's, well, it's really, when you've got these fast riffles running in, it's really scoured out some fairly big holes. Right, fished out this one, so I'm now on my uh, last pull before I've got to get out actually. There's a fairly big weir ahead and I have to get back out onto the path. Bit of a scramble here so if you hear a splash and a bit of swearing you know what's happened. Oh, it's running over some bedrock. And, uh, could do with a few more studs in my uh, wading boots as well, to be honest, they're a bit, a bit slippy. Trying to get a better uh, foot position here, because I'm not quite balanced enough to cast. So uneven over the foot. Ah, there we are, that's better. So I've got a nice steady bubble stream on the right, just about quick enough to move my nymphs down, although what I'm going to do is a little bit of active nymph in here, so just every so often, instead of just picking the slack up, I'm just going to lift the rod tip and just just give the, the nymph a touch of movement, just look like it's swimming a little bit. Not a lot, just, just enough to give it a bit of movement and you can find if you do that then you can actually successfully nymph fish and in water that's probably a little bit too slow for it and it can be it can be quite a good technique actually just provoke that take the nice wind's really biting now it's really pushing up through the valley even the woods aren't keeping it out i wonder if the, the reason i enjoy this simple fly fishing so much is I think simple, but you get the idea. Simple setup, straightforward. 
think uh, I wonder if I enjoy it so much it's, it's because this is the kind of session I did when I was a child now, I didn't have many flies then a few pheasant tails a few black spiders pretty much it in terms of sinking flies and then dries oh, I think all I ever used to fish with was a black gnat that was probably about it when I was a kid it's nice not to worry too much or not not to overthink it you know not having to think about you know see some people with boxes of several hundred flies and you know 50 different patterns and a case full of different lines and I'm thinking guys I'd just spend most of the morning pondering about what to use and wouldn't actually get any fishing done I think the beauty of this is you know, you're in and away and you can actually just enjoy the time you've got with the craft, the technique and the looking at the water and not, not overthinking it but each to their own that's just my personal take on it right we're getting deep again here it is feeling quiet and I had that early early fish on but could well be my uh, my only bit of action for the day really right, this, this looks quite deep here and I, I don't know if I fancy it so I'm gonna wind in and uh, maybe just have a prod with my stick before I walk up this pool right how deep actually is it? Mm. 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 I don't know what to do it's kind of waist tight and uh, it's cold so let's see if I can get across to this bank and see if that's any shallower if I just skirt up the edge this whole pool is very deep well that's me done first little session in podcast after lockdown one fish on right at the very beginning which threw the hook but just genuinely lovely to be out today thank you so much for listening um, and I hope you've all kept well and uh, you get out fishing soon if you want any information on our fly fishing lessons please go to www.peaksflyfishing.com or for our flies and tackle it is shop.peaksflyfishing.com until next time thank you and bye bye